Okay, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dana. That was a nice big up and down head shake. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Well, we will do as we normally do. Uh, this is the uh, community partner team monthly meeting. But we have a special way to start today. Yeah. And it's less than birthday. Happy birthday. Aha, you didn't okay. come, you don't get a piece of candy. Yeah, you gotta Well, princess. Well, princess. Well, there you go. Yeah, right. 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 And we got some happy birthday plates. Got yeah. to the whole committee. Oh, yeah, right. if you're not in person today, sorry. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, this is like the lightest crowd we've had in the room. These meetings typically last about an hour. There's still time for the Warren County folks to come over yeah. to the office. If okay. <laughs> Yep. All right. Happy birthday, Leslie. Thank you. And if you follow Leslie on Facebook, um, she has a special, special feature and a special theme for this year's birthday. That's right. That she has put her face. You might you might have seen Leslie partying back in Studio 54 <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> She switched her face out. Yeah, check check it out. My my husband did not understand and was not very appreciative. So <laughs> I think I think everyone needs to talk about how awesome it is and how it's the greatest thing they've ever seen. Uh, all right, well, we'll let you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. I think most of us know each other, but this group meets uh, once a month, as I was saying. And so thank you, Anna, and thank you, uh, Laura, for that surprise for Leslie. That was awesome. Um, we talk things workforce in the region, and we normally have a featured topic. Um, so if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, if this is your 81st time joining us, welcome. Um, so we try to uh, assemble once a month in person and hybridly like this, but we also uh, have a way to stay connected and receive communication from uh, Mr. Frank Garabato. So I'm gonna let everybody in the room go around and introduce themselves. Um, and I'll move the camera because for some reason I'm not getting to work remotely. So start with you, Jessica. All right, Jessica Calvert with South Central Workforce Development Board. Chad Spencer with Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. And I'm your reluctant host, Brian, with the Workforce Development Board. Um, and so, yeah, you guys introduce yourselves in the chat. So we've got Joda, we've got April. Thank you, April, for joining. Um, and Shannon, good to see you, Shannon, and Keith, and Denise, uh, some of our people. This is their 81st time joining. Thank you. Um, and Priscilla, and I know I saw Jana. Yeah, and we have Miss Beverly. Good morning, um, and Alicia. Good to have you. Got yeah, folk rehab representation. Always good to have you guys. Uh, Jake, Bianca, Matt. Okay, we have a three for one chiming in here. So, good morning, everybody. Okay, well, we'll do as we normally do too, and just start with news updates things that uh, partners want to share. Again, you don't have to wait till these meetings to do it. Frank will receive that information. If you are not receiving communication from Frank, you can go to our website. Um, I'll have a screen for that here in a moment. But what news do we have to share this morning? Updates to your programs, something that's event related going on. I have something, Brian. It's Amy Thomas. Hello, Amy. Hey, 
Hey, um, I'm on my laptop because our internet's out on my desktop for some reason. I don't know. It's crazy. But um, I have some good news. We have uh, doubled our enrollment since January here at Butler County Adult Ed. And um, also we have one that just received and earned his GED. And we have one that's uh, getting close. And I know I've mentioned, um, and Heath has been awesome on helping with this too. I have four students from four different countries and places. I have one from Guatemala, one from um, China, one from Ukraine, and I've just picked up another student from United Kingdom. So I thought Woo! that was pretty cool. <laughs> I just think that's neat. So, but thank you all. Fantastic. Nice update. Who else? I have an update. Yes, Ms. Pam, go ahead. I have uh, available openings for the Senior Community Service Employment Program in Butler County and Hart County right now. If anybody has any suggestions or cares to help put that word out, that'd be great. Um, and we recently had two people in Warren County obtain subsidized employment. So that was a, always a fun plus. Great. Congratulations. Hey, Brian. Uh, you should say subsidized <laughs> Yes, Ms. Beverly, go ahead. Okay, uh, so you all know I work with the Great Onyx Job Corps, and uh, we, we are recruited students 16 years of age to 24 years. Uh, we're willing to come and do presentations. Uh, we would like to do tours of our center uh, for anybody that you would have that would be interested. Uh, and that's to include our international community as uh, our new Americans, as, as they adjust. Uh, we offer the opportunity to get your high school diploma or your GED, as well as you have training opportunities, uh, so hands-on skills training. Uh, additionally, we are also recruiting staff at uh, all of our job course centers across the United States that are federal. So if anybody is looking for a job change or interested, uh, just uh, shoot me an email and uh, I'll go to USA Jobs and look at jobs and send me a resume and I'll get it to where it needs to be. Uh, so we do are really looking forward to working with you guys to uh, uh, help us out and, and navigating through what we need to do to make sure the students are up and uh, available with the pathways. So anything you can do to help, we would appreciate. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank Beverly, you. where are you located? I'm at Great Onyx in Mammoth Cave, Kentucky. Mammoth Cave, okay. And, and actually it's in Brownsville, but a Mammoth Cave address. All right, it's thank you. It's spring community. Wonderful. I'm good to see you too, Rosanna. It looks like you need a few more counties added yeah. to your repertoire there. You know, I don't see enough. That's not a long enough list. <laughs> I know. I'm slammed, but um, it's a pleasure to be here and meet everybody. Uh, I work with supportive services for veteran families, and we assist veterans that are facing housing crisis by either being facing eviction or they're actually homeless. We can help them uh, improve their income by helping with their employment situation. Uh, we also help with transportation besides the housing and utilities. We help with food, uh, clothing, and all kinds of different uh, resources that they may be needing. If you have any questions, you feel free to email me and I'll be happy to fill you in. I'm also hiring for two positions. Uh, I have a housing case manager that I'm, a position I'm trying to fill and I'm also trying to fill an income maximization, which would be very similar to what you're doing here, except you would be helping veterans improve their income situation. Thank you. Great. Right. Can we get your email please? It's at the bottom there in the chat, Rosanna R. Boamid. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry, I hadn't done the chat yet. If, if you could send me a flyer, I can put this out to the community partners on those positions. Yes, they're on Indeed right now. 
And if you'd like, you could either send me your resume and I forwarded it to my supervisors in Louisville, or uh, you can apply it on directly on indeed.com. We're hiring positions also in Owensboro to op open up that office. And then those Owensboro region would fall off of my Bowling Green office. Right. We're growing. Yeah. <clears throat> Just a reminder too, if you're ever looking for someone's contact information on the Community Partners private page, we have the directory where you can find everyone's, you know, phone, email address, who they're with. So, um, so know that if you don't get it during the meeting itself, it it's always there. Yeah, you guys may want to um, log in to that, and Leslie can give give you the password if, if you've been connected but you forgot. Like there, we we may have some out of date stuff sitting in there. You may have some yeah. staff that need to be uh, need to be updated. So, yeah, or it might show Chad Spencer works at three different places. I don't know. <laughs> no, I checked. I checked yesterday, Chad. Yep. Okay, he's just the one. Okay, he's a busy man. We'll be a good one for a while. <laughs> Anybody else have updates, news? I have one. Go ahead, uh, Frank. I'll be sending out a flyer later today. Uh, the Career Center at Bowling Green is hosting a job fair on the uh, 22nd of March from 9 to 2. It's with um, T. Marzetti and Company. So I'll send that out today and uh, distribute as appropriate. Thank you. Funny you should say that, Frank, because that leads me right into the next point here. Um, so we've got a whole slew. Jake and Bianca have been hard at work, and we've had a lot of discussions here between career team and the board. We did a lot of job fairs last year. Um, if it didn't feel like we did, um, then it was because we spread out into kind of the whole region. Um, but we had a very successful job fair. We reported at the meeting last month that happened in January at the Bowling Green Career Center with over 300 job seekers attending, most of those without a job or unemployed when they when they were coming through. But uh, we have deployed a strategy called Talent Tuesday that brings a job fair uh, that we're hosting. It's at different locations throughout the region and different counties. And you can kind of see our tentative schedule here. There's some to be determined, but for example, there in April, we're planning on being in Monroe County. Uh, May, we'll be there with Amy um, and crew in uh, Butler County. And so, uh, you know, just basically a, a plug and reminder that we have an events tab on our workforce board website where Leslie keeps these up to date. So Frank, that one you just mentioned, if we don't know about it or whenever you send it out, we'll get that added because we want you guys to have information at your fingertips about the job fairs and things that are going on. And it's still an old school way for people to connect, but we continue to see success from it. We see demand from employers to want to meet people this way. And, uh, and obviously from job seekers, they 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 like when there's a lot of representation uh, that they can go to one spot. And sometimes they're going to talk to flesh and blood rather than a computer that they've been trying to get a hold of or a voicemail they've been trying to get a hold of forever. Uh, so we've seen success uh, happen and breakthroughs happen when people are in the room together. Any other comments or Jake, uh, Matt, Bianca, anything you guys want to add? I have one That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. I have one save the date. Oh, okay. So Chad's got to save the date. Uh, May the 11th, we're going to have an expungement clinic okay. uh, here in Bowling Green. I will be under, I'll be doing renovation to my building, I think, that day. Hopefully, we'll be close to the end. But if not, I'm going to try to get Frank to maybe co-host it at the Kentucky Career Center. Uh, we're going to talk <laughs> about that after this meeting. But yeah, May the 11th will be the next uh Expungement clinic. I'll get Frank the information for everyone to register. It is a free service. Um, May the 11th. Fantastic. When's the last time you guys had one, Chad? On site late last year during our expo. Uh, it was in November, I believe. I can't actually remember. Uh, but this one, that one, we only had 50 slots. The one May 11th, we will have, we will try to do a hundred expungements. Wow. We want to start the process for a hundred expungements. So anyone that you're working with that has that barrier to employment because of the background issues, let them know here coming soon, they'll have the chance to register for a free expungement clinic 
May the 11th. I just have to find a place to host it. <laughs> <laughs> or you need some people to uh, figure out how to, yeah, pick up hammers and hang drywall and all that good stuff. <laughs> 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 it's supposed to start on our building uh, next month. Okay. I want to see Tracy walking around with a hard hat on and no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll go ahead. Brian, uh, I, um, this is Shannon. I'm actually on vacation today, but I was afraid that if I didn't log on when the birthday girl had a presentation, I'd miss something big. I expected her to be dressed up and, you know, ready to go. <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to say is the, uh, I know Talent Tuesday, I think, is going to coincide in Monroe County with the KDLA uh, initiative. Uh, and it they are having job fairs across, I think, across the state, definitely across the region. So, um I don't think there's anybody on here from any of the libraries, but um, they do have that going on. So if you've got a local library and want to get involved in that, it's April 24th through the 28th. Okay. And I think it's a five-day thing. I think that they are, they're doing something every day for that whole week. So Great. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we might be able to get some better uh, coverage and maybe press related to that event. Mm -hmm. That's great. We need it. We need it. All right. Um, just another thing that we're doing, this is not necessarily open to the public. We just wanted to make you guys aware of a workforce board that we're doing these things. We may have mentioned in the past, those of you guys that are um, uh, tuning in for our board meetings know this, and, uh, and certainly those of you that are board members know this, but uh, we are trying to do custom data of job well, I should say people that are not working and not participating in the workforce. So we kind of have it broken down, as you can see in the middle of the flyers there, the beautiful flyers Leslie's made. Uh, we're going county to county and we're looking at just county only data about who's not working, um, some factors going on about why they may not be working or what appeals to them. So some of that's demographic, some of that is because of uh, justice involvement or having a disability. So we're trying to give some, some narrative to that. And then we're also, um, talking about how to get them into the workforce so that employers know, yeah, we can get people to move here, which, you know, we have housing shortages, so that's its own challenge, but people are already living here and people are already living here and not working. And so these would be people that shouldn't be uh, competing for other jobs. Uh, the companies would be competing against other employers. Uh, these are folks that are presently not working. And so um, it's not it's not an exact number, but it's an approximate amount, but there's huge pockets. There's thousands and thousands of people in every county. And so um, this is this, these are what we're doing. And uh, it's John Leslie, John or John Leslie and I and Josh uh, Zazak, our uh, data guru guy, our workforce participation lead uh, that was hired back in November. And then we are uh, partnering with the local chambers to uh, get them to draw the businesses to come out. So again, you can see we've got two events actually going this month. We've only had one so far. It was in Butler County. Amy uh, was there and, you know, we didn't get the turnout. We quite wanted Amy, as you know. And then, of course, we were talking about it after that. But the whole idea is to open eyes and to help people realize what's available now. But that the we're hiring, join our team now accepting, you know, applications is not a message that reaches all audiences the same. So how do you diversify that? So uh, again, this is something where it's a different version of what we were doing with our summit last year, or I should say in 2021, because we didn't do one in 2022, we, we kind of conceived this idea to do instead, because we had struggled to get employers to come, believe it or not, uh, when we were talking about how to help them. So uh, we said, okay, we're going to go through the chambers and we're going to do some, some eye-opening uh, presentations here, so... Amy, any endorsement from you? Any recommendations as far as for a business out there? Business out there for? That may say, why is this worth my time to come to something for a couple of hours? Well, um, I've actually contacted all the businesses after we met that time and talked to them about all this. So hopefully if we have something again <laughs> or when we have something again, it's going to be a better turnout. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, did. Amy, do you have a do you have a soundbite that we could use to say Amy Thomas says this is the best thing she's ever seen in her life? 
or something can, along those lines. We can do that. Because <laughs> I thought that, I mean, that meeting that we had was amazing. I mean, I was very disappointed in the the attendance. And so that's why my brother-in-law, who's the president of the chamber here, we have tag teamed it and have gone to some of these businesses and have called some of them since that meeting. That's awesome. Thank you. That's remarkable. So whatever you all need, I don't care a bit to uh, to say, make a statement or whatever you need, Leslie and Brian. Okay. Well, again, here's a uh, uh, thank Leslie. you. For yes, oh, thank you. Go ahead, Beverly. I was just wondering, uh, the one for Barron County, has it went to the chamber? It should be. It, yeah. it has gone to uh, Baron Inc. And then I'll send it to Melinda Reynolds yes. at Cave City today. Just to make okay, sure great. she sees it. Great. Okay. So this is what I was mentioning earlier. If you go to our board website, shown there up at the top, southcentralworkforce.com. And then there's a page for community partners that will give you a partner login to check your page or check your listing and who you have of your staff that are in our uh, in our private page. If you're not on the private page, uh, you can click I'm interested and then Leslie will get you connected. So, all right. Uh, anybody have any needs, have a question to bring before the group right now, need to get navigation to anything? Okay. Well, we are going to jump into this month's topic and presenter birthday girl, Leslie. Yes. Uh, we'll be talking about some social media strategies that we should all be able to implement as soon as today, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right. Go ahead and click because I did, I did a very, look at that graphic. That's my face <laughs> on a butterfly. <laughs> it's sort of, it's sort of silence of the lambish, <laughs> but that was not my intent and I did not <laughs> I did not think of it until after the fact. So it's meant to be positive and happy. So just, you know, don't know Buffalo Bill associations with that graphic. It looks this, like something from the Wizard of Oz. Do you think? Or, or um, I'm sorry, uh, Alice in Wonderland. That's what I was yeah, trying to well, think yeah, of. It sort, Alice of does. it sort of does. But that was my attempt to put my face on a butterfly. So <laughs> we, we will be talking about social media and how you can become a social butterfly. Uh, these are just some, some overall suggestions, some things that I've found with social media. At any point, if you have questions or comments, please let me know. I am by no means an expert, but I do want to share some things that, that I've learned because it may be helpful to you and promoting what you're doing with your customers. All right, next slide. All right, um, this slide is full of memes. Um, some of you may not be familiar with that term, but I guarantee you've seen these memes. These are, you know, these are images that are shared over and over and over on social media. I picked a few of the ones that, that I like the best. Um, everyone, you know, again, it may not be something that you know what it's called, but you've seen them and people contribute to these all the time. Any personal favorites that you're seeing right now? The fan. The fan. <laughs> the fan. Yeah, the fan is my favorite because that is so true and it's very scary, but yet it, I still have not cleaned it. Um, and, you know, so again, these, these don't really serve a lot of purpose other than just making people laugh. It's just a, a fun thing to do. Um, but now you know what they're called and you can create these, you can, you know, there are all sorts of things you can do with these, um, or you can just share funny ones like the fan one. All right. So some facts on social media, it, we, can, we cannot deny the power of social media. Um, 
right now, they're estimated to be 4.89 billion total social media users worldwide. That's pretty crazy. Um, that's that's two spam accounts for every one person. That's the real yes. user, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Um, the the amount of time the average person spends on social media. Look at that. 151 minutes per day. That's not just teenagers. That's that's all of us. So, you know, over two hours a day on social media. And that time gets away from us. We'll scroll for a few minutes. We'll set our phone down. And all those times add up. I installed an app on my phone that keeps track of all those little minutes and then what it adds up to. Um, typically for me, it's about six hours. And that's, you know, and it's not me just looking at Facebook. This is me posting things, sharing, you know, so it. I don't want y'all to think, oh, wow, I'd like her job. No. <laughs> I was going to say, can we all agree that 151 doesn't happen from 8 to 5? Right? <laughs> Never. Right. So it is, you know, made up of lots of small increments. Typically, uh, it's how a lot of people use break time. You know, hey, I'm going to I'm going to take a break. So I'm going to scroll social media for a minute. 70% uh, of American adults use Facebook. Um, Facebook is where I'm really going to be concentrating today. There are lots of other platforms out there. I think for, for what we as partners do, Facebook is probably the best medium. So that, that's, that's the main focus. If I went off on too many tangents, we'd be here for a long, long time. So any observations, questions, comments, thoughts on this information? Are you going to talk about how the use of social media like Facebook has morphed? Because I can remember when I like MySpace and those that preceded Facebook, it was basically, for me anyway, a way to keep people that I care about appraised or up on the growth of my children and my family and things that we're doing and to me it seems like that has more into more of a you we could utilize this as business to bring the job or the opportunity to that person that's doing the 151 minutes yes during the hours of eight to five because they're at home on their couch yes um do you see that as you're working in that field oh, every day? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that I think that for, for a lot of us, that that's been the mindset of Facebook for a while. I'm going to share pictures of my kids. I'm going to share, you know, updates on how, you know, how my mom's doing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And we've gotten into that mindset and aren't utilizing it to its full potential as far as what we could be doing um, from a, not necessarily business, but a professional perspective. There's so much potential out there, absolutely. And we know people are using it. We know people are paying attention to it. And it is absolutely to your advantage to do it for your organization, 100%. All right, next one. You can still put your golf score, right? Yes, yes. You can still do, <laughs> do all that stuff. So with Facebook, um, I would like you if possible, and you don't have to literally do it, you can, you know, pull it up on your phone, or um, you can just try to go through your, your memory. Um, think about 
your social media account for your organization. If you do not have one whatsoever, I would say create one today. Create one for your organization. Um, if you per if you post too many things from your personal account that are all work related, people start tuning that out. Um, one thing that I do personally, because you know, I do try to share a lot of work things. I also make silly things and goofy things partially to amuse myself, yes, I will admit, but also because I know that I don't want people to tune me out because I share work things. So professional account and then your own personal account. So, you know, number one, you've got to figure out what are you trying to achieve? What's your goal with your Facebook account or your organization? Are you trying to reach clients? Are you trying to reach supporters? Are you trying to reach donors? Who are you trying to reach? What, why, why even have an account? And, and it's pretty easy to go through and look at different Facebook accounts and see, oh, these people really don't have a goal. <laughs> they really don't know what they're doing. Um, you know, there, there is guidance needed. The next thing you need to ask yourself is, you know, again, who is my target? Am I targeting potential customers? Am I targeting um, potential members, supporters? And you may have multiple different targets, but you need this. This has to be conscious. And I would recommend, you know, setting down with a sheet of paper and writing this stuff out because it that sort of makes it real. What am I trying to accomplish through creating this account? and sharing this information. Um, the last point you really need to be honest with yourself about is time. Do you have the time to invest in keeping this account current and posting? Do you, do you have that? Because I, I would say, um, you know, nothing turns me off quicker than if I go to a Facebook like business page and they haven't they haven't posted anything in a year. My assumption is they may be closed. They, you know, they may be lazy. <laughs> if they can't keep up with this page, do I really want to do business mm -hmm. with them? You know, it it goes back to nonverbal communication and making, you know, making conscious choices and efforts and that communicates something. And I see. Oh, I had just asked the the group who has control of your organization's local Facebook page. Oh, OK. I was wondering who okay. is attending that does have control. And, and some of you may, like if you're part of a bigger organization, you may, you know, be able to do a local page. And I would, I would highly recommend that. You know, if you have to get approval to do use logos or whatever, do it. Um, people, people will pay attention. They really will. If you invest time and if it shows, you know, hey, um, I, I care about this. I care about what I'm doing. Another thing that's not up there is with checking yourself. Um, you, need, you need to be ready because sometimes people post things that aren't that nice. 
So you need you need to be prepared. There are going to be some people that that post things that aren't nice. So always be aware of that. Um, I get notifications when people comment and things like that. Um, thankfully, it's not that bad that often. But, you know, again, it goes back to Tom. Is somebody monitoring this? Okay, any, any questions, comments, insights with that? So I had asked a question in the chat, who has control? Does anybody um, want to just speak up and say kind of what you guys control or what you run the the, the uh, local page? Denise had a comment. Oh, okay, what did Denise say? How do you feel about removing negative comments? Oh, good Oops, question. That's a good question. Um, Denise, very good question. And honestly, I think it depends on each each particular situation um if it's really just horrible i i take it down um if it's something that i could use as an opportunity to say you know um oh we we want to we want to help you out send us a message or I'll reach out to you, you know, that that kind of thing um, will work as well. But if it's something, if it's something where you can tell they don't want you to comment, they don't, you know, they just yeah. want to post, you know, I I hate this person that works there. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, okay, sorry, that's that's gone. That's gone. <clears throat> but yeah, um if you remove every negative comment, that's going to get noticed. Some people will just keep making negative comments. And, you know, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. I would not want to be the one over that at WBKO. <laughs> <laughs> if you no. ever want to know if they've done some reporting that's a controversial issue, yes. all you have to do is go to their Facebook and... Yes, and there's usually a huge long thread. Yeah, you know that's some that's typically some good reading. You know, while you're while you're on social media, entertaining. Do what? Entertaining. Something. Yes. Oh yes. All right. Next. So on back to goals. Why why do you have this account? What do you hope to achieve? How will you know if it's working? And that's a question that that I think we forget to ask ourselves. Yeah, you know, I hey, I'm on Facebook now. And then not a lot of, of traction, nothing is done after the fact. Um, you need to figure out ways is growing your number of followers. Um, there are all sorts of tools you can check on Facebook, on the account page, look at your dashboard, see how many interactions you're getting, see who's paying attention to your messaging. Um, but you need to figure out how will you know if it's working. Um, one of the things, and I'll say this about our January uh, hiring event at the KCC, we had zero dollars to promote that event. And everything we did was on Facebook and through shares. And we had, at last count, I think it was over 350 shares of that event. And because of that, I mean, we had a huge turnout. We had a huge turnout. So that's one way I know it's working. Does it work every single time? Does it work every single day? No. There are some things, you know, I'll I'll post and I think, man, this is awesome. This is great. And nothing, <laughs> you know, crickets. Um, but you have to look at the big picture overall. How will you know if it's working? All right, next. I'm just enjoying the presentation here. Oh, well, good. 
target. Um, figuring out who you are trying to reach. And let's say you've got, you know, you've got multiple target demographics or target, you know, potential types of people you're trying to reach. If you're trying to reach customers, you can do a post that's obviously, you know, meant to attract them. If you're trying to reach donors, you can do a post that is obviously targeting them. You don't have to be like a one trick pony. Um, you can target things to different people, but you need to have a clear understanding of here are the groups of people I'm trying to reach through this social media account. And again, sheet of paper, write it down. There is power in, in getting that down on paper and having a clear mindset. Because I'm here to tell you, not a lot of people do that. And when you scroll through Facebook, it's pretty obvious uh, the ones who do not. All right. Tom, again, do you have the time to consistently update your pages? Facebook recommendation, three to seven posts per week for your, your organization. Some people will tell you more. Um, I don't think any, anybody would tell you less than that, but that, that's my personal sweet spot. Uh, it's a fine line of over posting, under posting. So if you do too much, it starts bugging people. If you don't do enough, people forget you. So three to seven posts per week. Um, I personally try to do at least one a day. And I do the board social media, the Career Center social media. I help Laura with Commonwealth Coders. You know, I mean, I've got, and that's all these different platforms for each organization. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, it's it's crazy. Oh, you have an admirer saying I love Oh, your thank you. Saying. Thank you. I love your background. <laughs> <laughs> it's for video A. Well, it is very cool. I like the colors. Very cool. Thank you. It's our, our five core values. Well, very nice. Very, very Andy Warhol, which if you if you are my friend on Facebook, you will understand that reference. <laughs> All right. Next up. Here are some things that people like. People like to see other people's faces that that has been proven over and over and over and over. People like to see other people's faces. Um, okay. There, you know, you'll go through Facebook and look at some posts from events and they're all the backs of people's heads or a lot of people do wide shots of a room and it's like, you know, some of those are good. Some of those, um, I'll do some of those to show, hey, if we've got a big crowd of people, I'm going to I'm going to show that. But look for opportunities. Um I will walk around the room and I'll say stupid stuff to make people start laughing because those those images are much more representative uh, than like people just standing around. Um, you get some really good pictures that way. So people like to see faces. People like to see interesting angles that will draw in visually. <clears throat> people like success stories. Who doesn't like an inspirational story? 
If you have the opportunity to tell about a success from a student, from uh, a, a client, if they want to share their story, then absolutely people respond to that. Brian, you said, uh, you said, I think last week you were talking about uh, GED success stories on social media. Didn't you, didn't those get a lot of traction? Oh, the uh, graduation ones. Yeah. Yeah. Cap and gown ceremonies. So, yeah, I was saying how whenever, and Amy probably knows too, whenever you share those graduation ones, right, like it gets so many more shares because all the family of the graduates are resharing and reposting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Positivity for sure. Yeah. So anytime you can do that, I I would, I would greatly encourage it. Um, people like transparency. That's what that last image is supposed to be representative of. Um, they, they want to feel like they know your organization. They have a good feel for sort of the, the vibe that your organization is giving off. And, you know, it, it doesn't need to come off as stale. One thing that I have really resisted, and and I probably am going to have to cave at some point soon, but I have really resisted doing automated posts mm -hmm. just because I don't want our content to look stale. I don't want it to look pre-planned. And, you know, that... And at some point, I'm just, just to keep my sanity, um, <laughs> I'm probably going to have to automate some, um, but I just, I, I, I'm going to fight it as long as I can. Again, just because I want, I want people to see what we do with the board um, in real time and make these things meaningful. Any thoughts on what I've just shared, on what people like? Have you seen that from things that you've posted? As an example, and you just said, I'm never going to find it. I see it in myself on things that I like and things that I share. I'm not going to share a Debbie Downer story, but when you guys post, like you said, graduations or people getting their cars or a cars work program, I'll share that and I'll like it because it makes me feel good to kind of vicariously live through them and their success or their happiness or their happy times. So I definitely get the sharing of success stories and faces. And the Debbie Downers, yeah, don't even interact with those. <laughs> Another thing, too, that you can do um, once you once you have your your Facebook account for your organization is you can comment <laughs> as your organization. And I have been trying to do that more and more because you don't want to be like, Hey, I post everything and I never comment on anybody else's stuff. Um, so I I try to, and Facebook is sort of weird because you have to double check and make sure your posting is as the organization and not yourself or vice versa. You know, I don't want the, the workforce board to be loving all these prints videos you know, that, are, <laughs> that are around or whatever. Um, but like, uh, when I see on someone with adult ed passed a test, Connected. I'm like, Congr congratulations, you know, that's great. So interact as your organization. It, it, it's a big deal. I mean, it really is. It, 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 to me, um, when I have people comment on our stuff, I mean, it makes me feel good. Just like what Chad said and we're all you know we're all fighting the same fight we're all on the same team so so definitely being supportive in that way 
is is uh, an excellent practice. All right, next one. Uh, people don't like the the first picture. I, and I don't know these people, so you know, I the, I just pulled this off the internet. Um, people don't like typos and grammatical errors. And, you know, Britley, whoever she is, posted a, pic a picture of her little angle. Um, so the word angel is misspelled. Uh, and then somebody commented, she's so cute. I mean, that that's funny. I'm sorry. It, <laughs> that is. Um, <laughs> but uh, double check spellings. Um, and and I can't tell you the number of times I have I've looked at something five times, hit post, and then I'm like, oh, crap, I, how did I miss that? And I'll go back through and edit uh, whenever possible. Sometimes I have to delete and start start all over again. But if you want to get somebody to comment, you know, misspell some words and, <laughs> you know, they'll tell you they'll tell you real quick. Uh the second picture, people don't like fake. Um, you know, nobody wants to see fake crap. It, I mean, they don't. I don't. Um, so it needs to be needs to be real. Um, Sometimes, you know, not everything will work perfectly. Brian and I have had some workforce water coolers. <laughs> you know, I mean, we we will show clips of where we mess up just because they're funny, you know, and that's real. It's not fake. Um, and then they don't like things that nobody really cares about. You know, if you post a picture of a meeting and it's like, yeah, we had a meeting. If you don't care about it, I guarantee it will show that you don't care about it. This is an opportunity to have fun sharing what you do and how you can get more people involved with what you do. So I'll look at it as an opportunity to have fun. Um, it is work. It does take time, but, but we the benefits absolutely outweigh the, the time investment in, in my opinion. Yeah, Denise had commented and said that the mis the misspellings make you look unprofessional. Absolutely. Sure. And Hannah said her autocorrect has failed her many times. So yes, amen for that. Yes. Yeah. All right, next one. I think we're just about yeah. Yes, we are. We are finished. So um, let me check the time. All right. Um, that concludes my presentation on being a social butterfly. And after much, uh, much delay, and thank you for your patience, here's what I've created. Um, and I went, I um, messaged Brian about this. Um, I started to create where you all could just submit success stories from your organization to us. And then I started worrying, okay, um, that, that has potential to get sticky. So here's what I've created. If you scan this QR code with your phone, it will take you to a link, uh, where you can submit a success story, um, in connection with the board, with the career center, with career team. You are welcome to have your clients fill out this form and specify there are lots of optional areas. Uh, specify, I worked with Denise at Logan County Good Samaritan. I worked with Amy Thomas at Butler County Adult Ed. So um, you are more than welcome to do that and I will create a post and tag your organization in it and all that, but I was I, I think it will be easier if the clients themselves do that. And I would encourage you to create some type of similar survey uh, so you can start pulling in your own success stories 
to share on social media. But this way you have an option immediately. Um, you, can, you can share, this can hopefully get you started. And it also will give you an example of how you might want to structure something similar for your organization. So that is that is where I'll end. Any insight, thoughts, questions? Leslie, uh, this is Heath. Happy birthday, first of all. But thank often, you. Uh, uh, just want to say enjoy the presentation, and uh, I, I am excited that um, a lot of the clients I work with, even the limited English speakers, uh, still have access to social media and Facebook. Um, it's been a few years now that I kind of transitioned more to being more Facebook based than even emailing or using the phone because they're constantly changing their phone numbers, uh, yes. maintain a phone number, but they maintain their social media accounts. So um, it has just worked out wonderfully. So if you haven't used it in that capacity yet, anyone on, on the call today, uh, I would encourage you to start thinking through those options. So detective work is what Heath is saying, I think. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So uh, Les, I was going to say a couple of things. Or, or I think this is, I know this applies um, to some of the smaller programs. You know, you get somebody who's sort of the more natural, has a knack, you know, for keeping up with the social media mm -hmm. page. You give them responsibility. They've got access. Facebook makes you link to your own personal private or personal page. I think when you create a business one, is that still the case? No, it used to uh, for the admin um, role. Possibly. Because what will happen is when you have staff turnover, then sometimes you're locked out legit. Like, yeah. you know, so what advice would you maybe have for an organization that maybe only has a, a couple of admin? Um, because Joda knows that adult ed, we, we must have had about three, maybe four Facebook pages just you know and then yeah. and then you lose all the followers you, yes. you lose the history you look like a new place and... yes yes now that that is an excellent point um with with admin and honestly i cannot remember if it if it absolutely has to link to your personal page to be an admin it probably does um what I would recommend is having a, if you have a contact or an info at whatever, that being the have two people as admins. Okay. Um, right now, like John, accounts that way if i'm hit by a bus <laughs> that that information you know is not evaporated john can still get into everything okay. but um using using a generic email account and then that way if you do have staff turnover you can change the password and that person can't get back into your account but yeah we lost the career center account yeah. um and so we're we're starting from scratch. So I think we're up to maybe 400 followers, but there had been maybe 1,500. So that might be a, a housekeeping matter for folks to do today that I'll go in and look on the admin page and see uh, April with Latrell and uh, I live the proof had said, yeah, but that you have to, you do have to have a personal page to create a business page. Another question I have, because again, this came up when I was with adult ed, should you have, if you're a, if you're a multi-county agency, should you have a separate page for each county to keep it personal that way? Or should there be multiple counties under one page? What's the general consensus? And, and I'll open that up to the group also. Maybe anybody have any firm opinions on whether the regional page gets it done or should it still stay at the local level? Before I say anything, I want to see what other people yeah. say. So th this is this is April with Luttrell Staffing. So we had an issue. We had a corporate page. We have uh, close to 50 offices nationwide. My company does. 
Um, and so we had an issue um, back during, I think it was right before, maybe right before COVID, might have been during COVID. But anyway, um, Facebook bots shut us down. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we came back, we had to create a Facebook page for each individual office. That was the only way that Facebook would let us come back. we had a corporate Facebook page, but then we had a Facebook group for each office was what we had originally. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the Facebook bots shut us down. They started flagging all of our stuff as uh, spam and eventually shut down every one of us, um, including the main page. Um, so my recommendation would be right out of the gate, just go ahead and create a separate Facebook page for each office. Um, it also gives each office the autonomy to go in and do different videos for specific events that just that office is holding um, or success stories from just that specific office, um, especially if you are a company that does have office in several different regions. Um, we have eight offices in Kentucky alone. Um, and then we have uh, five office, four offices in Middle Tennessee. Um, so, you know, we were able to kind of broaden our reach in a quick way because each office can, you know, post their own job fairs or post their own, you know, whatever they have going on in the area. So it's been pretty successful for us so far. Yeah. Yeah, I heard two lines of thought. One was you lose that local flavor, like you said, events, clients backgrounds right like people want to see the local centers but then i think branding and consistency yeah. is the issue so if somebody's out there with a lot of misspelled words and they don't have somebody that's checked them right. on that that wouldn't happen if you had a more regional page with a little bit more formal structure so that was always i think kind of the risk is maybe that for the person who's more of a social butterfly is also not as good of a speller <laughs> or with pictures or right. or getting permission from people to post pictures right so I think I think which way you decide to go. I don't know if there's a wrong way, but I think you got to figure out how to be consistent. Like I said, we have you know almost fifty offices nationwide, so we actually have a we have a marketing department. Mm -hmm. um, so usually the way that it works for us is um, so me as the branch manager, I'm the admin of the Franklin Facebook page, but Anything that I want to post has to be approved by the marketing team before I can post it. So I create the video. So you, you, so I won't, I wouldn't be able to do a live, but I can do a video and then submit it to marketing and then marketing can post it or a picture, or, you know, whatever I want to do. Um, and then we have uh, certain parameters as far as every office has to use the same logo. We have to have uh, the same information posted, things like that. So I think that, you know, if you if you have someone in your company, if you do have, let's say, five or six offices in a region, if you have someone that you know is social media savvy, maybe put that one person in charge of kind of mm -hmm. approving, the, you know what I mean? Like having everybody kind of run by, hey, this is what I'm thinking about posting. What do you think? Does it look okay to you? Um, and then, uh, you know, we still have things that sneak by. We've had, you know, a post here or there um, that has been posted with the misspelling that we've had to go back and correct or something like that. But for the most part, because we have another set of eyes that's looking at it, we avoid a lot of that. So. Great. Uh, fodder for you, Chad, right? I know you need some love and some help <laughs> with the local page. So, Yeah, <laughs> a lot. We, we, we're locked on, on yeah. that issue. Um, yeah, yeah. Have to create a whole the public program. has spoken. Yeah, we local matters. That's our big page, but the local page, yeah, we got to start. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I, I know you're trying. I know you're trying. I'm not picking on you. I, and one thing that we do, or it is being know, recorded. You can send them the recording, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, for the board, since we're a regional entity, 
there's just one board page, but um, make use of hashtags if for counties. I try to make sure, you know, that it's getting the attention for whatever location we're, we're featuring. Great. All right. Well, I know we got a little, a little bit over, but thank you. I know we had a little bit smaller group this week or this month. Um, let's talk real quick. What should we do for April? That's hitting when a lot of spring breaks are going on because we always hit the first Thursday of the month. So consensus to march on or consensus to take a breather for April? You don't have to tell us where you're going, but <laughs> if you will be around... Joda says breather. Breather. I'll probably be out. Okay. Okay. Because that's the thing. We, you know, we less to put a lot of effort into the presentation, and usually our partners put a tremendous amount of, of effort each month, um, you know, to, to to showcase their services. So we want to make sure that we get a good a good audience for that. So, okay. Um, Okay, yeah, Denise is going to be crazy. Amy says a breather. Yeah, so. Which one to breathe? Okay. <laughs> I just want cake. That's <laughs> what I want. Yeah, yeah, it's been we, sent right We got to get back to our regular yeah. scheduled program here yeah. of the cake eating contest. But thank you guys. As always, we will reach out. Um, if anybody wants to be then the May topic presenter, and I meant to put the May date on there, but um, that would be May the 4th um so star wars day and um i will say we may have something available here at the board that we would want to showcase so i think the board may may take the topic for uh, our guide um uh for may so we could we could walk through that um there's also a new labor exchange portal that's available for job seekers and so maybe we could kind of figure out a way to combo that or give you guys some updates on stuff so again we'll catch you guys loose thank you so much thank you have a great week Thank you.